face some comments about Johnny Manziel earlier. He thought, in fact, Brian Hoyer would get the start, but it appears that, as was announced yesterday, Johnny Manziel gets the start, and this is what he had to say. I've tried to spend my entire season learning what it takes to become a pro, and it's been great to watch Brian because he knows what it takes. I've prepared every week to be ready to help the team however possible, and my focus has been on improving every day. I'm very excited to get out on the field with my teammates on Sunday and to have the opportunity to make the dog pound proud. Just this in uh, a moment ago, some Vegas sports books had Cincinnati open as two and a half point favorites, but uh, as it became more apparent that Johnny Manziel was going to get the start, it is now a pick'em game. So, Skip mm. Bayless, uh, what does that point spread say? Mm. The odds makers are loudly validating what I have been saying since August. Johnny Manziel should have been starting from the start for the Cleveland Browns. For those out there who don't understand point spreads, a 2.5 point swing is monumental. It is the odds makers and the betting public are dramatically saying that Johnny Manziel gives them a much better chance than Brian Hoyer ever gave them all year long. And Stephen A, you, we've gone back and forth the last two weeks. I have resisted Johnny being able to play this year for the Cleveland Browns. And I'll tell you why I do it, because it ticks me off. It steams me that a coach and a general manager who did not want to draft Johnny Manziel, I'm talking about Mike Pettin and Ray Farmer. And again, I have it on good sources that that night it took the owner saying, hey, we just got a text message. Johnny really wants to play in Cleveland. Remember, it was the wreck the league. Let's wreck the league together, which became public thanks to Dal Loggins, the quarterback coach, and it put Johnny, it put even more pressure on Johnny. But it took that text message for the owner to say, I think we should go ahead and take this kid at 22 against the better judgment at that point of the coach and the general manager. It, it ticks me off that they are now going to throw him in out of desperation because I think that Mike Pettin and Ray Farmer have no idea what they have had in Johnny Manziel all along. I, I think they should be thanking their lucky stars. They have this kid. And, and again, it's a tough spot to throw him in against a, a very veteran defense, a, a team that's, that's still in the playoff hunt in the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think he'll make some mistakes, but I also think he'll make some plays. And I'm on record long term. This kid can make Pro Bowls. He's going to be a star. I, I think that the Houston Texans made a huge mistake not taking him number one. And I think the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I think we're seeing it now, made a, in, at least as big a mistake not taking him at number three when they took Blake Bortles. So, again, I resist it a little bit just because I resent the notion that these guys are going to benefit from having Johnny to try to, quote, unquote, save their season with, with a couple, three games left. If they... The point spread, in my opinion, is the excitement. It's the excitement of Manziel playing. But I was on record earlier in the season I did a show. I thought Manziel should have started from the beginning as well because if Hoyer has the success that he did, it's kind of hard to pull him out of there. And he had to stumble. With the way Cleveland's defense has been playing, mm. if they win this game, they're going to regret that they didn't play him this past weekend because that game against Indy, was there for the taking. Sure. They should have won that yeah. game. If Hoyer does anything, Cleveland Brown wins that game when they're really alive in a playoff hunt. I think he's going to play well. So like you said, he's going to have his mistakes, sure. but he's going to bring excitement. He's going to bring a lot of excitement. He can run around. He can really throw the ball. And so uh, I'm eager to see how he plays. I want to watch him play, and it's that, it's that excitement. It's like LeBron going back to Cleveland. I want to see what Johnny's going to do. And I want to see how he's going to perform because, like you said, he's going against a good defense. Yep. And it's what you said. If Manziel plays well, it's, oh, we put him in the game and they didn't even want the guy. Exactly. But I think he's going to have a good career. I think the kid can really play. He's going to bring lots of excitement just to the team. That first drive is going to be very interesting to see how they script those first 10 plays for him where they bring out some read option and things of that nature. But uh, I think he's going to do quick, well. Quick point order. He never ran read option at Texas A&M. Again, that's, that's new to him. He just was a pure scrambler. Ran some quarterback draws, but never ran read option in college. And you, just for the record. And kind of varying off course, you look at how RG3 has struggled. It makes Shanahan and them really look like they knew what they were doing when they had him there yeah. because he hasn't played that way since they left. But I think Manziel is going to do well. It, it will be fun to see how he does with Marvin calling him a little person. Mm -hmm. As an aside, Mike Shanahan is somewhere laughing, and RG3 has made Mike Shanahan look very, very good.
Let's get that out the way. Back to Manziel and the Cleveland Browns. Skip Bayless, I think you've gotten emotional here. Mm. Um, every reason that you gave, bottom line is that the dominant feeling that you have is rife with emotion and pretty much nothing else. There's nothing wrong with that because you believe in Johnny Manziel because you've always stated that you believe in Johnny Manziel. But you're acting as if if he does have a bad game, it'll be the end of the world, and it won't. Because to me, the big story that you're missing in all of this is the fact that Brian Hoyer has been awful the last four weeks. That's what this is all about. This is not about a popularity contest elevating Johnny Menzel, like people tried to do at the beginning of this season. This is not about the former Heisman Trophy winner who wreaked havoc last year, even as you know, with no defense at Texas a This is not about that. This is not about Johnny Menzel, you know, being better than Brian Hoyer in training camp, and he should have been the starting quarterback. Well, Johnny Menzel, they didn't trust him because he was acting, you know, a little wild off the off the field or whatever it is. None of that has anything to do with why Johnny Manziel is going to be in the lineup this Sunday afternoon. It has everything to do with the fact that Brian Hoyer has stunk up the joint and we have to try something. It's that simple. And to me, if you take Johnny Manziel's name out of the equation, none of this is a big issue. None of it. We're not talking about the Cleveland Browns. We're not sitting here, and I'm not talking about as a show. I'm just talking about a, a, as a culture. I'm talking about the folks out there, whether it be other networks, our network. We ain't talking about Cleveland on this level. We're talking about it on this level because it's Manziel, because we think Manziel is the story when, in fact, the real story is that Brian Hoyer has stunk up the joint. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting an opportunity to see somebody everybody pretty much has wanted to see, but this is the legitimacy of it all. To me, Johnny Manziel should have been in a week ago. He should have been in again. Should have been in 16 but, weeks but, but, ago. But, okay. but, but no, no. The reason why I say no, I'm not disagreeing with it. I'm simply saying no is because your belief is because he wasn't put in in week one. He shouldn't have been put in. Mm -hmm. you know, because why put why throw him to the wolves? We're not you, this late. Well, I'm saying you're not. They're, throwing, they're still in the hunt, man. You're not throwing him to the wolves. You're saying we need your help. There's a difference. Okay. You're not sitting there saying, you're a sacrificial lamb. You got no help. You're going to stink. You know, it's almost like Kobe with Dell Harris when he was a rookie and he shot those air balls against Utah. We all knew that Kobe was set up to fail because he was getting on Dell Harris's nerves and Dell Harris got tired of him running his mouth about how he was going to be great and he underestimated and slept on the Black Mamba, the future Black Mamba. But he set him up to fail and we all knew it. This is not that scenario with Johnny Manziel. All they're saying is Brian Hoyer is really diminished, I hope, and our aspirations this is complete, when it comes to what we it's, think it's is going desperation. to happen. That's they, all. They don't like him. They don't like his attitude. They don't like Ooh. this. The, 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 the yeah, yeah, head coach, yeah, yeah. But, the, the top people, but the so brass, what? they don't like it. But, but what I'm they don't like his behavior. He, they don't like it that he went to the Cavs like game But that's week. not why he's in the game this week. He's in the game this week because Brian Hoyer ain't getting it done. Because they're desperate. Right. That's why. And right. they're feeling a lot so, so, of public so, pressure. So if they're desperate, it's not about the public pressure. It's about the fact that they're desperate because they're losing games with this guy quarterbacking for them. So if that's the case, why are we treating it like, oh, my God, it's unfair to Johnny? No, I'm desperate. I need your help. If Whatever skills playing, you got, bring it. If he played last week against Indy the way that defense played, they win the game. All they right. win the game. Yeah. Mike Pettin said uh, yesterday it's natural to obviously put Johnny Manziel in now because they are losing, as the gentlemen have said here. Uh, T.J. Hushmanzada, good job. Take a break. Come back. You did all right, man. We're happy to have you. Don't forgive you for disappearing for nine weeks. Wait, is he coming back? He's going to come back. Oh, he's going to come back another second? No, 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 no. Oh. The cops are waiting oh, okay. right around the yeah, corner so he yeah. can't get